So therefore, the job of the parent and the teachers in an environment is to produce the right atmosphere in which what? Learning and growing happens. Automatically it will happen and the kid blossoms. Now, there are many, many things that in the course of our conversation we will definitely deal with. I think one of the mics gone off or something. <clears throat> Today our topic is on awkward adolescence and victorious youth. A very, very beautiful statement made by Pooja Gurudev Swami Chinmayanandaji was that teenagers and youth are not useless. Many times people say, no, oh, they are useless, they are all aajkal na chokra. How are they? He always used to say, teenagers and youngsters are not useless, but they are used less. You know this very famous and popular story, there was this lion cub which got lost and it got mingled with a herd of sheep. The mother died or something, the lioness died and here was this little cub helpless and got mixed up with the herd of sheep. And all it heard all its life was bleating and that is why it tried to imitate and the sound that it brought out was almost like a funny bleat because it can't bleat properly anyways but that's what it did all the time and then it would go around and he thought his friends were all these and his the sheep were his friends and one day he saw a herd of lions and when these lions were there, these lions saw this little cub and they said, Yeh apna hai. <laughs> This one is our, our variety. And all the other sheep, the minute they saw the lion, ran away, bleating. And this little lion, he stood by. Why? And at that time, the lion roared. And this little cub also. He wanted to, till now he was bleating and then he got confused. He says, this is some strange sound and I am not scared and why are my friends all scared and where did they run away? And it from within itself brought out this big huge roar and says, hey, I thought I was one of them. Now I realize I'm one of them. It realized its potential and then it joined the group of the lions going away from the group of sheep. Have you all understood? Very often we have this fantastic, unbelievable, infinite potential which is lying in us. And right now what are we doing? Bleating away. <laughs> Not even using one hundredth of that total potential. Little, little, small, small. And we think that's the big thing, you know, as though we've done big things. The really tiny, tiny things we've do done and not even realized our full potential. And that is why Guruji, Gurudev always used to say, youth and teenagers are not useless. They are only used less. Their full potential is never realized. They themselves are unaware. Forget about it manifesting any of it, they are themselves unaware of their potential and therefore they are never able to perform to the peak of their potential. And the second, because you know what happens is you compare yourself with small, small, little, little achievements. He got 25 marks and I got 27 marks. Oh, what a big achievement, isn't it true? And this is all we compare ourselves with. This one is a little more, little more and that's it. Our, our goals are also so, you know, like small and so therefore where do we reach? Nowhere great. What is your goal of life? Oh, I want to go to UK. Okay. Can I go to UK, ma? I'll go into this universe. Oh, bus. Bus is super. I'll get a degree. Bus is super. I'll get a house. And then what I'll get? I'll get a car. Kai car car? Oh, Mercedes. Okay. Bus. This is this, this, all these little, 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 little things. My friend, in any Toyota, it's my Mercedes. 
and I want a little more, and a little, and all these little, little things, and all we remain. We remain small because we think small. We never think big. Then the second statement he made was so beautiful. He would always say, and always many of you must have been told, you know, youngsters are all careless. So he would say, the youth are not careless, they are cared less. They need to be taken care of more, and then you will see what happens. So there, there's a very lovely experiment that was done. It was called the Pygmalion effect, which they, they did research somewhere in Europe with her in a school. They, had, they picked up students at random without telling them that they have been picked up at random. And then they said, this particular group of students, they are really brilliant. This was what they were told. And you are brilliant and you can do anything and you are fantastic and the sky is the limit. And the other group of students were picked up again at random, randomly, and they were told, you can do nothing. You all are good for nothing. You will come to nothing in life and you better forget it. You will not go anywhere. Now, what happened? At the end of about one term and two terms, they found that the students who had been told, who were actually quite brilliant, and who had been told that they were brilliant, they fared really excellent, which was again expected, but the students who were not so good also, because they got this encouragement that they can do a lot, they performed very well, and they also started progressing at a very fast rate. Whereas even the brilliant students who were told that they were completely useless and nothing could come out of them, they fared very badly and they could not, their grades started growing down, even though they were quite brilliant. They call this the Pygmalion effect, and they said this is what happens in many, many cases. When people are all around tell you you are useless, you can't do anything, what happens? You actually do according to what others tell you. So remember, they are not useless, but they are used less. And they are not careless, but cared less. So we must do something about that. Now, change is a fact of life. Everything changes, everyone changes. And that's good, it's wonderful. One of the very, very important thing that we should be taught is how to cope with change. Because change is inevitable. That's the only changeless law of the world that everything is changing. Is it true or not? Nothing remains. People don't remain the same, relations don't remain the same, nothing remains the same. The world changes, fashions change. Isn't it? A few years back, if anyone had spikes in their hair, they, he'd be called a, what? A weirdo, right? And now, cool. Isn't it true? So each one, you know, like at different times. There are some times when the long hair is the fashion, sometimes the short hair which is fashion, at different, different times. So therefore, Everything changes, anything, nothing, no relations. It's a very, very strange sort of a situation. See, when parents are like, uh, the kids are really small, then they go after the mummy and say, mummy, mummy, and the mummy says, akho divis, mummy, mummy, su kare ja, tari mette ram. You know, go and play on your own. Don't do mummy, mummy all the time and keep holding on to me. Come on, play on your own, come on. And then what happens? The same child grows and becomes, and the mother and the father become old. And then what happens? The mother and the father, beta, beta. And what do the beta say? Akko diya sa beta, beta su karo jo, tabari mette karo na kai. Now why are you doing all, you know, mommy, mommy, mommy all the time? You do everything on it. My dear son, you do on your own. Now just imagine how relations change. At one time, the child went after the parents, the other time, what? This is it. Everything changes. Now, if we know that it, change is inevitable, don't you think all of us must learn how to cope with change, understand change, anticipate change, deal with change? And un 